What's going on all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today as I talk about 10 more of the best standalone graphic novels. So stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Last year I put together a list of my top 10 best standalone graphic novels. It was a lot of fun and in the comments area I saw so many different suggestions so I thought huh Maybe we'll make this an annual thing. We'll do this every year where I suggest 10 standalone graphic novels. I do hidden gems every month and I do top 10 lists all the time, but I figured standalone graphic novels really matter to people that are either trying to find a gift for somebody or trying to get into comics. Uh, maybe they've seen a movie and they're trying to get into a specific character. And I do reading or where to begin reading characters too. Um, and all those are in different playlists, so check those out. So yes, these are standalone graphic novels. You don't have to be bogged down by comic book history. Uh, you don't have to worry about reading anything afterwards, unless you want to. You can always tell you where to go after that. Um, but yeah, if you have a list, please leave your list down below. Let me know if you've read any of these uh, once I go through them. So let's go ahead and get started again. This is just my opinion. Vision by Tom King and Gabriel Hernandez Walta, published by Marvel Comics. To me, this is a teenage and above type of story, and I'll be telling the age groups um, during these videos too. So this is a self-contained story, and it's accessible to MCU fans, so people that have seen the movies, the TV shows, and fans that have been trying to get into the character of Vision for a while. Um, and I'll be completely honest with you, I really, the least I say about it, the better off you are. But since most of you have come here for the basic plot premise, I'll be happy to share that with you. So the basic story is Vision, and he just decides to one day settle down in a suburban neighborhood with his wife and two kids. And he just wants to live like everybody else. Sadly, this is not what they get. Instead, we are treated to the effects of being treated different as well as a gradual increasing tragic story that's equivalent to just watching a train wreck as it's about to happen. Uh, you, there's a lot of plots and twists in this particular story that I didn't see coming and it's one that you won't be able to put down and even though this is Vision just having dreams of being a normal person having a normal life you still see aspects of him being in the Avengers so there's a little bit of that in here. So maybe it does help a little bit if you knew that he was part of the Avengers, but honestly, this can be enjoyed by everybody. Uh, it is available in trade paperback formats. There's a complete collection and then a deluxe edition, which I suggest uh, if you can still find it because it has all the extras in the back that are completely worth it in oversized hardcover format. I Kill Giants by Joe Kelly and J.M. Ken Nimura, published by Image Comics. This is definitely for teenagers and above. As a matter of fact, the lead character is a teenager herself, and that is Barbara Thorson. She is a character that is bullied. She has no friends. However, she is smart, she is angry, and she doesn't follow the rules. Uh, she won't let anyone close to her, and she sees things that no one else sees. Or maybe they do. Uh, that's right, she hunts giants. She's the only one that can keep her town safe. This is a standalone story, but I, without going into detail, it is so much more than that. Uh, because I think the beauty of I Kill Giants is that Joe Kelly has this ability to convey the reality of a frightened little girl um, and her pain, along with the wonder of her imagination. Because you see, it doesn't really matter if those giants are real, if Barbara's actually seeing them. What matters are the characters that we grow to love. As in the story, when Barbara begins to let people in, she starts letting us in, in a way. And what we once saw as an isolated, angry teenager, we start seeing in a different light. She becomes a more wonderful and sadly disturbed character. And I think Nimura's artwork, his line artwork, uh, really adds to the jittery quality of the tone of the story. This is graphic storytelling at its finest. So. I will warn you ahead of time though, bring those, bring those tissues um, and remember that you are stronger than you think. Uh, available in trade paperback and in hardcover format. The Killing Joke by Alan Moore and Brian Boland, published by DC Comics. Teenagers and Up, 
this is an absolute masterpiece and i'm not making that joke because i have the absolute here <laughs> but it is a masterpiece by the legendary alan moore and this is a must for any dc fan and it is a masterpiece of a comic that may or may not reveal the origin of the joker it's all left up that's the beauty of the story that a lot of it is left up to interpretation and it's pretty much the story of the Joker, and he's looking to prove that any man can be pushed past his breaking point in one day and go mad. So the Joker attempts to drive Commissioner Gordon completely insane. And, of course, it's up to Batman to stop him. And that's pretty much the basic premise of the story. I mean, it is a short, quick read, and people probably wondering why I added it to the list, because it does feel like a good standalone story. You don't need to understand anything about the Joker beforehand, other than the fact that he's crazy, but you get it all here. You don't need to understand how Batman works and how he thinks, because pretty much you get Batman in here the way that every writer kind of aspires him to be. And the ending, like I said, all of it is really left up to interpretation to up to the reader. It's one of the best and deepest stories I've ever read. And it's all about the complexity of the Joker. Is he trying to prove that humanity is hopeless? Is it just a sickening joke just to get attention? Or has he really just gone completely insane? And it's all about the characters and their psychologies and what you do after somebody you really care about was suddenly taken away from you how would you be able to survive and it's wonderful there's a reason why other writers have stayed away from making a sequel there have been some follow-ups to this story um some s a little more successful than others but it's just stands alone on its own uh, the art is completely stunning it's very detailed um it's very vibrant with some of the colors Joker's just looks absolutely sickening, and some of the frames, man, they're just, will be forever embedded into your head. Now, in the Absolute Edition, because it is available in every format possible, Deluxe Edition, trade paperbacks, uh, hardcovers, but in the Absolute Editions, you get both colors. You get the original colors and the new modern colors. Spinning by Tilly Walden, published by First Second. This is uh, definitely Teenagers and up and this is a book that i had to read for old reader new reader and one that i did not expect to fall in love with it's it, it was amazing um i couldn't put it down i really enjoyed it i fell in love with it i love the artwork and i actually i got a bunch of other tilly walden books because of this um so this is her graphic memoir it's all about her and how she spent 12 years skating figure skating it's all about her waking up before dawn to go to morning lessons, uh, went straight to group practice after school. She spent weekends competing in different ice rinks. So skating was her life for 12 years. It was a central piece of who she was. It was her safe haven from just the stress of schoolwork, bullies, and then of course her family because she didn't feel connected to them. However, when she switched schools and began to take more of an interest in art, um, and she started crushing on her first girlfriend and just figured out how self-centered the world of figure skating is. She started to wonder whether it still had a role in her life. And the more she thought about it, the more she realized that she may be outgrowing her passion. And that's what this is. Although it is a story with queer themes, it's not your traditional coming out story or your stereotypical teen romantic drama. It is more about what it feels like to lose that passion that you once had for something. That love that you had, that, that, that thing that made up your entire world. And that's how I connected with this character instantly. Because we've all been there. We've all been at that place in time in our lives when, for me, it was art. Like, it's, it's time to let it go and, and do other things. And it really sucks because it's one of those crossroads that you have to make a decision. Um, now, this is available in softcover format. It is available in hardcover format. And it is a wonderful story and 100% suggest that everybody check it out. All self-contained. And it's all about her. It's all about Tilly Walden. We Three by Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely. Published by, well, DC Comics. It was Vertigo Comics, but now it's just a DC. I believe it might be reprinted in the Black Label line. Uh, this is definitely for older teens. And I will warn uh, people ahead of time, though, if you're 
an animal lover and you can't stomach the thought of them being hurt, whether in movies or in comics or in literature, uh, comics are literature, uh, non-graphic literature rather, then maybe stay away from this one. This one has a lot of that in here and it is a very violent story. Uh, think Homeward Bound meets Short Circuit. That's exactly what this is. Three household pets are weaponized for lethal combat by the government um, and they escape when they find out that they are no longer needed. They are the outdated system. So these three animals have to find a way home, wherever that may be. And they're being hunted by government agents. They're being hunted by other animals that have been tinkered with. And it is brutal. It is wonderful. And this is the story that made me a Frank Quietly fan. Wasn't I wasn't the biggest Frank Quietly fan at all. Actually, as a matter of fact, I did not like his artwork. But, my goodness, the frame layouts that he's able to do here with the brutality that he has to portray on paper is just insane. Um, and Morrison, of course, they are always great no matter what they do. And this book, even though it's short and simple, it will still hit you at the core. We have done an Old Reader, New Reader on it, so we do that every week. We have a show called Old Reader, New Reader where uh, somebody reads a book from their past and then we have a new reader tell us what they think. But this is available in trade paperback format. It is available in an expanded trade, an expanded hardcover, standard edition, and a deluxe edition. Absolutely 100% belongs in everybody's library. If you're enjoying this list, I just want to remind people to hit that like button. It's something small you can do, but it means the world to us on our channel. That helps with our algorithm and our channel keep growing. And really quick, I always like to point out these two books, Understanding Comics, The Invisible Art, and Making Comics, both by Scott McCloud. And they really help with the understanding of graphic novels and reading them. I know it sounds ridiculous, but you get so much more out of reading graphic novels after reading these two amazing books. Even if you're not into making comics or wanting to make your own comic, it's just to better understand the art and the sequential beauty behind it, this is the book to get. And really quick again, it's I use the term graphic novel, even though some of these stories that you're seeing on the list have been previously published in single issue format, but the term graphic novel changed in the early aughts with the book market. The traditional graphic novel Translation has changed and now it's pretty much collected editions, what people refer to as graphic novels. Old Man Logan by Mark Miller and Steve McNiven, published by Marvel Comics. Uh, this is Teenagers and Up for sure. Now, it, this is the same team that did Civil War and I think on my channel I've gone about how I'm not the biggest Mark Miller fan, but he does something right in this particular story and that is introduce people that have no idea who Wolverine is or what he's about and he does a damn good job of it even though he's telling the story in a possible apocalyptic future setting so that's what this is this is the story of a Wolverine that has gone through hell and he gave up the title of Wolverine something horrible happened to the X-Men and now it's just him raising his family on this farm and this farm he rents from the Hulk family. That's right. He has uh, to pay fees to the Hulk family. He, and he's just a farmer. So when he needs money, this old man named Clint Martin, so Hawkeye, comes, picks him up, says, hey, man, we have a job to do. It'll pay big. Come with me. I'm driving. They take off on the spider buggy across this futuristic, like I said, a post-apocalyptic war torn land. And they go on many mighty misadventures. And keep in mind, Hawkeye is also blind during this time. So you get to see a lot of characters that you may have seen in the movies, that you may have dabbled with in comics, and just see what their possible future self would look like. It's a lot of fun. It's definitely Unforgiven, meets a little bit of Lone Wolf and Cub. And once you read it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and the artwork by McNiven is detailed and beautiful and just dynamic and cinematic is the only way that I can describe his art. It's a lot different than the Logan movie that came out. This is a different type of futuristic world. 
And yes, there are follow-ups to this. You can follow his adventures in Battle World through Secret Wars and then in the 616 universe, he had his own ongoing series. But really, this is a standalone, all-in-one story. It's been collected in trade paperback format, a complete collection, oversized hardcover. It is part of the Mark Miller Wolverine Omnibus uh, collection. So it can be found anywhere. God Country by Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw, published by Image Comics. And this is definitely for older teen. In a remote part of Texas, we meet Roy Quillen, who is trying to juggle between taking care of Emmett, who is his widowed father who suffers from Alzheimer's, and his family, so his wife and his daughter. And Emmett isn't just a problem for his son. His violent outbursts are more than the local police can handle. Unfortunately, he just goes off on his family, doesn't recognize him because he is dealing with Alzheimer's. Uh, doesn't know who his granddaughter is, makes her cry because he doesn't recognize her, starts yelling profanity at his family. And during one of those visits that Roy makes to his father with, with his family, a tornado just wipes out Emmett's house. And of course the family's freaking out, but out of the rubble stands Emmett with a sword. And as soon as Emmett picks up the sword, he gets all his memories back, everything he can remember. His love for his family, he can remember his wife who passed away. He remembers everything. However, the sword's creator wants the sword back and will stop at nothing from getting it back. And Emmett has to decide whether to put his family through hell fighting uh, for this sword or whether to give it up and go back to the old ways. And that's the premise of this amazing emotional story and when i say emotional there is a spread pages in here that oh my gosh just get me every time uh jeff shaw's artwork is amazing it's sketchy and detailed and sharp and he has this ambiguous yet definitive way of drawing fantasy elements that just immerses you in this fantasy world whether we're dealing with texas or whether we're dealing with where these other gods came from uh, available in trade paperback format. It's also available in this hardcover format that was only, I think, available at comic book stores for a while. I hope one day they'll do a huge deluxe edition because that's the way this story needs to be told. Daredevil, The Man Without Fear by Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. published by Marvel Comics. Uh, teen for sure. And this one's cheating a little bit since the original idea for this comic was supposed to be for a movie script that never happened. So the movie never took off. So what Frank Miller did was just rewrote it as a comic strip, and that's what we got. We ended up getting his comic script and then the artwork here by John Romita Jr. This is a reimagining of the Daredevil origin story, and it also includes a bunch of other Marvel characters you may see if you're familiar with the MCU, the movies, or the TV shows, or you've even read some other Marvel comics. You see Stick show up, Matt Murdock's mentor, and he shows up immediately after Matt loses his eyesight in that accident. You see the actual appearance of a young Electra where they first met, and this is something that was talked about in the comic books when Frank Miller took over. Uh, and then you see his the introduction of his friend, uh, Foggy Nelson, and just the young Daredevil and the way that he grows into becoming a superhero. And it almost feels like Batman Year One. Why didn't I add Batman Year One on this list? Huh. There's always next year, right? But yes, that's absolutely what this is. This is one of the best standalone graphic novels. You don't need to read anything after this. But believe me, you'll want to find out more about Daredevil after reading this particular story. And the artwork, I think, is great. I think that John Romita Jr. draws my favorite take on Kingpin. He's just huge and menacing. And the art when he's when Matt bandages himself up, when he's wearing nothing but black and wearing a black mask, I think is phenomenal. And available in trade paperback format. You also have it in hardcover format. It's part of a box set. It's available in this. Um, this is the Frank Miller Daredevil Omnibus Companion. So it's widely available in different formats and has been around since the 90s in graphic novel format. The Fifth Beetle. The Brian Epstein Story by Vivek Tiwari, Andrew Robinson, and Kyle Baker, published by M Press, and Older Team. So this is the untold story 
of Brian Epstein. He was the visionary manager who created Beatlemania and guided the Beatles from the basement gigs that they used to have to just international stardom. So it's mainly taking place from 1961 to 1967. But it, this isn't just some mere documentary type of graphic novel. It is heavy on the mature themes and subject matter. It's also uplifting and inspirational. It's a story about struggle and the overcoming of odds and the demons that keep holding us down. This particular story is told literally, metaphorically, and sympathetically. And in a way, spiritually. Uh, it is a sad story about an ambitious man that does succeed greatly, but he never measures his success like the rest of the world because he remains troubled, lonely, and naive in some ways. But what really shines through this is what a wonderful man he was who did what he did for love and friendship rather than fame and fortune. This is a must read, not just for fans of music or the Beatles, but if you enjoy a wonderful, great story that will hit you at the core. Uh, it is available in trade paperback format. It is available in hardcover format, and it's one that should not be missed. Habibi by Craig Thompson, published by Pantheon Graphic Library. And this is mature content. Last year, I talked about Craig Thompson's love story called Blankets. And this year, I'm talking about another one of his love stories, but this isn't your average love story. This is, to me, the true definition of love. Whereas Blankets was about a love that was your first love that you'll always remember and will always remain with you, this is about love that is everlasting, which is a lot different than remaining with you. And it's hard to describe unless you've read it. Now, I will warn you, though, that if you cannot stomach for animal cruelty, but more importantly, cruelty towards children, then this is not the book for you because there is a lot of that in here. Just about every chapter shows just the wrongness of some of these things going on and it's it's hard to read even though even though i read all kinds of stories with these kinds of things or have seen some of these things firsthand it's just still hard to read the story is about dodola and zam two orphans who are brought together by tragic circumstances they both were slaves and they escaped and they ended up living in this desert on a boat uh, just a wrecked boat and they lived there for years together. And unfortunately, through horrible circumstances, they are separated. For years, they are apart. And through this book, this wonderful book, Thompson takes us through all their struggles that they go with, all their questionings of the universe, and what they really are to each other, what they mean to each other. The story has themes of progress, of pollution in the environment, of race, gender and of sex but primarily and supremely it is a story about the supremacy of love this wonderful book covers so much that it's hard to describe it just as a love story um, because you're going to find things in here that are hard to swallow you're going to it's racism sexism slavery poverty and the unfairness of the world and on top of that you also get this religious experience you get a background understanding in the way of Islam and how close ties it is to Christianity and it really reminded me a lot of uh, the friends that I made in college and one you know many nights over some drinks just talking about the similarities and religions across the world and how close we really are but I have to remind people that this is still a work of fiction and it's also subject to the interpretation of the author's perspective and the folks that he worked with on the book it is one of the best standalone graphic novels I have ever read. Uh, I just reread it because I hadn't read it in a, in a couple of years. And it's even though it's 650 plus pages, I read it in one sitting. It's, it's a book you cannot put down. It's one that belongs in your library. And oh my gosh, when you find out what Habibi means, it just, man. What a beautiful ending. Uh, available in trade paperback format. It's also available in this uh, hardcover format. And yeah, 100%. If you have not read it and you enjoyed Blankets, you need to check this out. 
If you're interested in purchasing any of the books I talked about on the episode, check out our sponsors who are starting a Black Friday sale. If you live in Europe and are interested in pre-ordering or purchasing Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC big books within the EU, flat shipping of 990 euro for EU countries, extremely careful and sturdy packaging, emails are answered within 24 hours, and they have a superb selection of new releases and out-of-print books on their website. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code NEARMINCONDITION, all one word, at the checkout for free shipping to all EU countries with your first order. Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for your minties. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the check out and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order this promotion is valid for u.s customers only cheap graphic novels your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more and those were more of the best standalone graphic novels of all time again if you have any suggestions please leave your list down below and um, if you've read some of these let me know what you think if you've never read any of them i would love to know what you thought after reading them again this was the uncanny omar thank you all so much for watching don't forget to smash that like button ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live if you haven't subscribed please subscribe we put out videos every day sometimes two sometimes three uh depending on how crazy we get we are on patreon and on spreadshop amazing ways to support the channel and thank you so much to our patrons could not be making videos like this possible without you all and more importantly, everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Have a great Thanksgiving.